lyrics of a song by Shirley Caesar goes like this. You may be down and feel like God has somehow forgotten that you are faced with circumstances you can't get through. Right now it seems there is no way out and you're going under. But God has proven time and time again He'll take care of you. And the chorus says, and he'll do it again. He'll do it again. If you take a look at where you are now and where you've been, he's always come true for you. He's the same now as then. You may not know how, you may not know when, but he'll do it again. Or Sue says, God knows the things you're going through, and he knows how you're hurting. You see, he knows just how your heart has been broken in two. But he's the God of the stars, of the sun and the sea, and he's your father. He can calm the storm, and he'll find some way to fix it for you. And the chorus again says, and he'll do it again. He'll do it again. If you take a look at where you are now and where you've been, he has, he's always come true for you. He's the same now and then. You may not know how, you may not know when, but he'll do it again. So tell God, believe the Lord that God is going to do it again for you tonight. In the name of Jesus. I'd like to read some scripture for you as we talk about a mother's love. From Psalm 139, verse number 13 says, For thou hast possessed my reins, thou hast covered me in my mother's womb. I will praise thee, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are thy works, and that my soul knoweth right well. My substance was not hid from thee when I was made in secret and curiously wrought in the lower parts of the earth. Thine eyes did see my substance, yet being unperfect, and in thy book all my members were written, which is continuance was fashioned, when as yet there was none of them. How precious also are thy thoughts unto me, O God! How great is the sum of them! If I could count them, they are more in number than the sand. When I awake, I am still with thee. Over in Psalm 127, verse 3 to 5 says, Lo, children are a heritage of the Lord, and the fruit of the womb is his reward. As arrows are in the hand of a mighty man, so are children of the youth. Happy is the man that hath his scribble full of them. They shall not be ashamed, but they shall speak with the enemies in the gate. I remember some time ago, while in the office one day, the phone rang and the mother was on the phone. She was calling. As I listened to her, she began to unfold and tell me her situation, her circumstance that she was facing. You see, she and her husband had not long migrated here to the United States of America. They were now trying to get themselves situated. They were living with family and conditions were not ideal. They were trying to make the best of the circumstance that they found themselves in. I don't know what circumstance you find yourself in this afternoon or tonight, but I want to let you know that nothing takes God by surprise. Even your present circumstance, God will make a way and he'll do it again for you. And if he's brought you out one circumstance before and brought you out of other circumstance, the same God that brought you through those circumstances is the same God that's available and able and willing to help you and to bring you out this evening. She began to relate to me what was her circumstance. She told me 
that they already had two children, a boy and a girl. And she found herself that she was pregnant with a third child. And she said to me, I don't know how this happened. I told her I knew exactly how it happened. And um, she related to me, number one, that she was currently working part-time and was about to do her state board exam to become a registered nurse and that she was not in any position financially to be able to handle a third child. She mentioned too that her husband was not fearing much better than she was. He was a mechanic by profession and he would get little jobs here and there at different places, nothing permanent. So for financially, they were not in a position to handle that. Emotionally, she herself too was not ready, was not prepared to handle the present circumstance that she found herself in. But one thing I can say, that I know that God is faithful. I have proven the Lord over and over again. And I've proven Him in this very circumstance, myself as a Sabacus. I remember that every time that Sabacus was pregnant, God was faithful to provide for us during those times. I remember one time my company, it actually merged. And out of that merger, I got an 80% increase in my salary. Another time, God was faithful. I was able to get overtime. And God brought us through those difficult circumstances. And I know that the same God that brought us through was able to make a way for her. So I decided to try to encourage her as best I could, share the limit of our testimony, and uh, I prayed with her. When I think of prayer, I think of Jabez in the book of uh, First Chronicles, the fourth chapter. It says there in Jabez, was more honorable than his brethren, and his mother called his name Jabez, saying, Because I bear him with sorrows. Jabez called on the God of Israel, saying, O oh, that thou wouldest bless me indeed, and enlarge my coast, and that thine hand might be with me, and that thou wouldest keep me from evil, that he may not grieve me. And God granted him that which he requested. Recently I heard a preacher spoke about his grandmother, how she raised her ten children, and she was praising God for them, because none of them went to prison, none of them had a substance abuse, and all of them had given their lives to Christ. I want to say the same God is a faithful God, and I want to say that whatever circumstance you're facing today as a mother with your children, the first and foremost advice I have for you to give to you is to pray. Pray like you never prayed before. Pray without ceasing. That says the effectual fervent prayer of the righteous availeth much. The Bible says, call unto me and I will answer thee, and I will show thee great and mighty things which thou knowest not. God still answers prayer in the morning. God answers prayer at noon. God answers prayer in the evening. So keep your heart in tune. Pray. In all your ways acknowledge the Lord, and He'll direct your path. I want to say that as long as you and I have children, whether you be a mother or a father, you would need to know how to pray. Because children, I remember somebody told me when you have little children, you have little problems. But when you have big children, you've got big problems. 
Little children might be changing their diaper. You might have ear infection. You may have to change a pamper here and there. A couple of sleepless nights or what have you. As kids get older, first of all, some of them will turn around and tell you they hate you. They don't love you. Some will break your heart. Some will make your hand fall. Some will make your head swell. And some will put you through the ringer. You have to be constantly praying and calling upon God for them. And I've discovered that every child that you have is different. Some of them require a little prayer, and some of them require fasting and prayer. You've got to be on your knees night and day. But I want to say that whatever circumstance you find yourself in, let your first impulse be to call upon the Lord. Pray. Seek the face of God. God is faithful and God will make a way for you. Life is fragile, someone says, so handle it with prayer. Secondly, I want you to notice here that the word tells us when Mary was approached by the angel, she was a teenager and told that she was going to have a child. And the first words that the angel said to her, Fear not. So besides your prayers and the circumstance you're facing, I want to say, God is saying, do not be afraid. Fear not. Fear not, for he says, I am with thee. I will never leave thee, nor forsake thee. Lo, I am with you always, even to the very end of the age. Be not afraid. Fear not. The angels were told, Fear not. I bring you good tidings of great joy. Isaiah the prophet tells us, Fear not. When you go through the fire, and you're not going to be burned. When you go through the flood or the waters, you will not be drawn. God is faithful. And he's saying to you that whatever circumstance you're facing right now as a mother, Fear not. Fear not, for I am with thee. I will not leave thee, nor forsake thee. God is by your side. And he that keepeth Israel does not slumber nor sleep. The Bible says God has not given us a spirit of fear, but the spirit of power, of love, and of a sound mind. Do not let your fears about our present situation cause you to doubt the promises of God. Yes, we all become afraid. I remember one time when the house was broken into and the kids would not go in the basement alone. The only way they would go into the basement, one of their brother or sister or my daughter had to assist them or go down with them. And occasionally they play prank on one another. They will go down to the basement, turn off the light and run back upstairs. I want to say to this evening that God has his light shining on you and he will never leave nor forsake you. He's with you. Whatever you're going through, your ups and your downs, your present circumstance with your child, maybe you're a parent, you have a child that's locked up in jail, God is with you in your circumstance. You have a child that's on drugs, God is with you in that circumstance. You may be facing difficulties with your children being at home. God is going to keep you. It's going to give you the strength to make it through. Mary was a teenager. I was recently looking at a program called 16 and Pregnant. And all I want to say that if you're going to go through as a parent, you're going to face some challenges. Think if you're 16 and pregnant, number one, you're in high school. Still have another year or two of high school. You're unemployed. There is spare pressure. You have to think about pampers. Maybe you have to transfer from the school that you're attending to go to another type of school. Yes, you're faced with a lot of challenges. But I want to say whatever challenges you're facing, God is there with you. He will help you. He will strengthen you. 
would uphold you with the right hand of his righteousness. You might be facing, like Agar, eviction. Maybe your parents are deciding you're 16 and pregnant, they put you out. But I want to tell you that even in the wilderness that Agar was in, God did not forsake her and her son Ishmael. I want to say even so, the same God that watched over her is the same God that's going to watch over you. Yes, the circumstance may not have been right. You should have been thinking in terms, instead of studying boys, you should have been studying books. And parent says, boys and books do not mix. So you need to focus your energy and attention in the right place. Sometimes you put the cart before the horse. And so I want to encourage you this evening, that if you're facing this kind of circumstance, God is still there with you, and He will see you through. But your circumstances you're facing also come with responsibility. Things like prenatal care. I remember in the community that I worked in, that most of the women there didn't go to the public hospital to get their babies. There was a nurse called Nurse Graham. Nurse Graham would come to the home, visit, make house call, and check on them. Sometimes in the middle of the night, you have to go to wake her up because a parent or a mother was in labor. She would come with a flashlight, come into the house, and many times some of those homes, they only had two bedrooms, and suddenly there was eight or ten kids living in the same house. They slept across the bed. Sometimes the midwife very quietly come in there and the mother would go through labor and deliver the baby. And she would come back the next day, provide some postnatal care for the mother and the child. And then at the end of that time, around the ninth day or dear about, she would come, prepare the baby, hand the baby to the mother in one hand and stretch out her other hand. To get paid and so I don't know what circumstance you have and what responsibilities you may have you might be pregnant and having to do homework because you're still in high school and you want to graduate there's medical expenses you have to get new clothing maternity clothing because you're pregnant what about your support system the baby's father. The Bible says in the book of Matthew, chapter 1, verse 18, that Joseph was going to put Mary away because she was pregnant and she was engaged to be married to him. And But the angel of the Lord spoke to him and told him, Fear not to take Mary to be your wife. And Joseph stepped up to the plate. He took on of his responsibility, and he was able to be there for Mary. Sometimes it takes a village to raise a child, and sometimes you need your parents. Some parents are supportive. Sometimes you have friends or even relatives. To become a mother and a showing mother's love, you have to go through those trimesters, the three trimesters. First one, many times, very difficult. Some mothers I know can't go on the subway. You have to get off at almost every stop. You have morning sickness. Some have cravings. Remember seeing a story with Lucy. I love Lucy. Lucy wanted pickles and she wanted ice cream at the same time. Different people have morning sickness and what have you. It's a process. Then you begin to show and there's embarrassment. Because now sometimes you lose some of your friends. They begin to fall off, some begin to abandon you. I remember one mother, that a father, after he had several kids, he abandoned her, left her, went to Canada, left her with several kids. But I live to see that woman, that by the grace of God, she made it. She struggled, she migrated to America, raised her kids, put some of them through college, and was able to see them grow and become mature adults at married. It ended up that that very father came across from Canada many times looking for help from the family. 
We don't know what life circumstances will put us through. But this woman made it by the grace of God. She went through that process and God helped her. I want to say that despite what you're going through as a mother, that God has good plans for you. Your dreams will become a reality. Your visions will be fulfilled and your future might be secure. I want to encourage you to keep hope alive. You may have a bad beginning, but you can have a good ending. I want to tell you there was good news for that woman that called me, that member that called me at the church that day. She eventually wrote her state board exam, waited for the results. She passed her exam. I was happy to apply for a job as a registered nurse in one of our city hospitals. Her husband, on the other hand, had put in an application for transit, transit department. Not long after that, he got a call from the transit to go for an interview. He went and landed a job with the transit department, transit system. So she got a very good job as a nurse, and he got a good job working for the transit system. And that child came and to their child is alive and well. And if I'm not mistaken, I think they had another child after that. So I wanted to say that it might have been a story that had not such a good beginning, but it turned out to be a story with a good ending. I remember years ago a story, I believe it was back Baptist preacher E.V. Hill, who shared a story that he was going to college, didn't have very much means, but his mother put him on the bus and he left and went to college. He got on the line for admission and he had spent his money on the way. The devil told him, you don't have money for college, get off the line. The line became shorter and shorter and finally he was one person before him. The devil said to him, don't make yourself a fool and embarrass yourself. You don't have money for college, get off the line. But he remembered something that his mother kept saying to him and he remembered his mother's words to him as he left. Son, I'll be praying for you. Son, I'll be praying for you. And right about the time when he was going to be next, somebody came and called out. He said, is there an E.V. Hill? Is there an Ed Hill here? He said, yes. He said, come off the line. We have a scholarship for you. And remember his mother's words and I'll be praying for you. I want to say this evening, Mother, whatever circumstance you face this evening, like this mother faced a pregnancy that she was not prepared for, but God was faithful to her and he made a way at the right time, at the right moment. She made it and her husband too. Keep praying. Whatever circumstance you're facing, God will bring you through. Also, do not be afraid. God is with you. He will see you through. And if he did, if he'd give you a miracle before, he can do it again. So, as the songwriter says there earlier, he will do it again. He will do it again. Just take a look of where you are and where you have been. Has it he always come true for you? He's the same now as then. So, Keep looking up. Keep trusting God. He will make a way for you and he'll bring you out of whatever you're facing by the grace of God. So my encouragement to you is keep praying. Don't be afraid. Your circumstances are only going to last for a while. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy will come in the morning. God bless you. I'd like to pray for you. If there's somebody in your home who needs Jesus this evening, I want to pray for you that you surrender your life to the Lord. Maybe you're a son and you're being rebellious. You're being a juvenile delinquent. You're falling again. You might be a daughter that you're with the wrong crowd. Your friends are telling you all the different things. You're coming at all kind of hours in the night. 
I want to remind you what the Word of God says, Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Don't break your mother's heart. Show your love. She carried you for nine months. She went through labor. Some of them hard labor to give you birth. Some of you have had C-sections to bring you into this world. And I want to encourage you. Don't let your mother's prayer fall to the ground. Listen to her and God will bless you. Surrender your life to the Lord. I want to pray for you and pray for your mom this evening. Father, in the precious name of Jesus, I pray for every son, for every daughter, to the hearing of my voice. Father, you know their relationship with their parents, especially their mom. God, I pray for those that the relationship is not going well. Maybe they're not talking. There's been no communication. Some have left the home and gone to their own crib, so to speak. Others are in the street hanging out. Others, the parents don't even know where they are at. God, I pray you'll touch them right now. Repair the relationship. Let it be a bond, Lord. God, the things will not happen. And they lose their parents and God, they're there crying and wondering why didn't they act differently. Bless the home this evening. Touch every mother, I pray, that's within the sounding of my voice. Minister to her needs. Every domestic need. Meet, I pray, today. Touch your fathers, we pray, that both the mothers and fathers will be on the same page, working together, building a strong family. If there's any discrepancy, any breakdown in relationship, I pray, God, that you'll bring them back together. Your reason, you'll work out their differences, Lord. And God, I pray, Lord, if you know domestic violence, if you know child abuse, Lord, have the parents take, give them strength to deal with the stress of every day. Those who are working from home, cover them with the blood and help them with their children, we pray. Have the children to be subject and obedient and meet all the needs, Lord. And they can all say together, as Joshua said, Joshua 24, as to me and my house, we will serve the Lord. I thank you for blessing and meeting every need and answering prayer tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. The Lord bless you. Thanks for listening. And I want to encourage you to please remember to support the church. I thank those of you who have been giving your tithes and offerings and also for the love gifts. God bless you. May God continue to watch over you. May heaven smile upon you is my prayer in Jesus' name. Amen.